I remade Wordle using App Inventor 2, MIT's joke of a game engine, and I hated every f minute of it. When you think of game engines, what do you think of? Unreal? Unity? Godot? Game Maker? Maybe even Scratch? Well, I doubt many of you thought of MIT's App Inventor. App Inventor is MIT's attempt at making a user-friendly platform to develop phone apps, with a cater towards those unfamiliar or afraid of code. This engine uses the iconic drag and drop blocks associated with Scratch, since after all, they're both made by MIT. MIT being short for Massachusetts Institution of Technology. I'll give them a point for how simple it is. There's no need for typing, no need for syntax memorization, and of course its interface is very simple, being separated into two categories, a designer and a block section. In the designer section, you drag and drop different design elements to design the app of your dreams. And in the block section, you add functionality to those elements. For example, a button you create in the design section can be programmed to play a sound in the block section. Pretty simple, right? Well, that's why it f***ing sucks. Before I get into that, I'll first need to set the scene and just exactly how I got myself into this mess. I was in my computer science class when my teacher, Mr. Smith, as those would remember from Froglog Zero, assigned us to make an app in App Inventor. Of course, we couldn't use any normal development engine, no, 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 because our school, you know, for some reason, clings onto dear life to useless shovelware years past their best before date. I mean, take a look at the phone you see when you load this program. What is this green sidebar? No phones these days look like this. It's so tiny. Worst of all, the resolutions are so small, it only further proves this app was made a decade ago. In fact, it was. Being the masochist that I am, I gave myself the challenge of remaking Wordle in this geriatric engine within the two weekish time frame given by my teacher. Why is it that I always find myself giving myself challenges with ancient game engines that I always end up regretting? Of course, I wasn't required to make something this advanced. In fact, my teacher urged us to make simple games, but my monkey brain's neurons fired at the thought of making something difficult. If you're anything like the rest of the world and myself, you've also probably been obsessed with Wordle these past few months or so. For those of you unfamiliar with it, you basically just guess a random word of the day within six guesses, with each guess revealing new information, and each guess having to be a real five-letter English word. A grayed out letter means that the letter isn't in the word. A yellow letter means that letter is in the word, just not in that spot. And a green letter means that letter is in the word and in that spot. The challenge is within trying to be as careful as you can with the limited amount of tries you have, while trying not to repeat letters, since after all, there's only one word of the day and only six tries you can take a day. Additionally, some words can have repeating letters, only making it more difficult. You're probably wondering why I chose such a complicated task for such an old engine, and I truthfully, I mean, I really wish I could, but I can't tell you why I made my- why? I don't know why. I don't know why I made myself- The app's name was gonna be Smith Sirtle, since it's, after all, quite popular to feature my teacher's name in the title of games or just projects. I decided I was going to recreate Wordle, but with six letter words instead of five letter words. Of course, I couldn't follow any real tutorials since Wordle is such a new game and this is such an old engine. My first task was finding a large list of English six letter words since I needed to compare whatever the user typed to a real English word. This proved to be a bit more challenging than I had imagined, but I ended up finding a list of about 16,000 words. I ran those through a Python script to split into a CSV file that App Inventor could actually read. I then found an arbitrary list of common six letter English words to use as the randomly selected words since similarly to the real wordle they don't actually just give you completely random words they they're generally words that people should know. I also decided that realistically I wouldn't be able to implement the daily word feature and instead opted for a random word after each word is completed. After creating the two CSV files, I ran into my first problem, actually interpreting whatever the user types out and comparing it with the list. For some reason, in App Inventor, lists created from CSV files can only compare CSV rows because it would make too much sense to have the list created from the CSV file to actually Act like a regular list. I'm a bit ashamed to admit how long this took for me to figure out, but nonetheless I got it working. Unfortunately for myself, I still had a long road ahead. The next thing I decided to try implementing was an on-screen keyboard, since a key feature with Wordle is how the keyboard also changes colors like the letters in the word box. This, of course, proved to be harder than I had originally anticipated. So this is what I came up with. Looks good, right? Well, this is what it actually looks like, because 
why the f wouldn't it? App Inventor has a neat gimmick where what it shows you on your designer screen is literally nothing what it looks like on your phone, especially if you don't use percent scaling since all phones have different resolutions. So basically one pixel on your phone looks completely different on someone else's. Ingenious design, right? Either way, what I noticed was that App Inventor was removing the gaps between the elements, making the keyboard look really strange. For a while, I contemplated whether or not I should keep the keyboard and if, if it was too much of a problem than it was worth, but I eventually decided that I would keep it. What I did to fix this was adding a little transparent button that did nothing in order to pad everything out. I want to mention another neat gimmick that I absolutely adore from App Inventor. For some unknown reason, App Inventor's random features, like random lists or random generations basically, they are not even remotely random. Most modern coding languages have a built-in feature that make random features, well, random. As far as I'm aware, modern code basically handles seed management and making things random all on its own without having to hassle the user. But App Inventor kind of doesn't do that at all. Basically, App Inventor seed or its randomizer never changes unless you program it to. It generates the same random sequence every time the app starts. The only way I found to bypass this was by using the built-in database feature to store a new random seed every few minutes and then calling upon that seed upon program start. This would basically ensure complete random words, but it's silly to think that I still had to set that up myself. I was also working on the word grid, which I ended up having to completely change. Originally, I chose to use the built-in canvas feature with image sprites that I could change. My gripe with this was that the images were impossible to align since, as I mentioned, what I saw on my designer was nothing like what I saw on my phone, and what was one pixel on my phone was 20 or whatever for other people's phones. Eventually, I switched to using a table layout with images all scaled using percentages, and that worked much better and fit pretty much every other phone a lot better. Keep in mind, many of the things that seem obvious in hindsight took so long for me to figure out on my own. It was so frustrating working with this stupid fu- MIT, if you're somehow listening, please give this app some love. You are only making students like me and my classmates suffer. No, genuinely. A lot of other people in my class were complaining about how bad this tool was. My next feature was making subsequent button presses change the grid blocks to white squares with each press. Basically, the typing function. And this, of course, would include an enter and delete button working. I cannot begin to explain the amount of adjustments I had to make for this to work. So many things kept breaking as I added new features, most of which included the final row breaking after clicking and deleting enough times. Okay, so I had white boxes that can fill up and be deleted from the outlines. But what about the letters actually doing anything? Or the colors? Well, I'm glad to announce that was also agonizing to program. I want to preface in a sidebar that a lot of these things aren't exactly App Inventor's faults, but are just a pain to accomplish within App Inventor's drag and drop block system. I actually have a list of problems and bugs I encountered within App Inventor that I will get to later. Cool, so we have pretty much everything done. Last few steps were adding an instruction and title screen. I'm gonna gloss over this, just understand how frustrating it was to actually make things look good on my phone compared to the designer. Let me go over a best of style list of what I hated the most. First off, the drag and drop system. Why could you have implemented a coding language syntax alongside this? I think it's likely these blocks become parsed and translated into a coding language anyways, so how would it be any more difficult to just let users use the big scary text coding language if they wanted to? Secondly, the lag. Holy sh the lag. There are actually two types of lag, one of which I don't exactly blame App Inventor for and one that I do. For the one that I don't blame App Inventor, it's the phone lag. So basically, when you test apps, you connect to App Inventor server, with all the data being transmitted real time through the Wi-Fi. In my own project, what I found is a large lag when trying to check if a word is within the large list I previously mentioned. This frequently crashed the phone, requiring me to build the project into an APK file that I could emulate instead, having much better performance. The second lag I want to talk about is of course with a drag and drop system. When you have enough blocks for a large app like my own, the website chugs like really badly. It's almost impossible to edit anything. MIT, really? A university of your status couldn't find any way to optimize this? The only solution I found personally was collapsing large chunks, but it still noticeably lagged. Thirdly, for some reason, my app doesn't work on Android phones. I literally do not understand how else to explain this. My teacher has an Android phone, which I decided to connect to with my app. All the labels and buttons looked broken. 
great. First of all, I had to completely update the percentage scaling to work for his phone compared to my phone. Just why? How is this even an issue? The main issue comes when an Android phone user tries to install and open the APK file from App Inventor's build. Oddly enough, on Bluestacks, an Android emulator, both the iPhone version and Android version work perfectly fine with the iPhone version's UI fitting better. When Android users try to run the app, it just literally doesn't work. For some reason, unbeknownst to me, it just skips the first letter. How is it even possible for different phone versions to just completely destroy my code? I'm not even sure who's to blame for this, but my bet is that App Inventor's APK file is just incompatible with some Android operating systems. Number four, another thing is just how some features don't work or work poorly. This could very well be an error on my part, but I feel like some code blocks just don't really work or are poorly implemented. It pretty much just led to a lot of workarounds on my part that just made my misery even greater. One example would be how looping through a dictionary just doesn't really work and I couldn't figure out why. Or when I tried switching to another screen, it just gave a null error. That's it. Picking an item from a list. Why the f would I want an item picked from a list to have quotations and parentheses attached to the element? Why? This is just such a dumb decision. Like, if the item doesn't have those in the first place, why would I attach them? The errors. Okay, this is a problem with a lot of programming languages. I'm looking at UC++. But I just want to continue to point and laugh at App Inventor. So many errors mean nothing. A null error. What does that even mean when I'm trying to switch a screen? Or like dictionary errors when I don't have any. So there you have it. This is my non-exhaustive list. Yeah, it's not perfect, but neither is App Inventor. If you're someone interested in learning programming or app development, I would caution you if you are interested in trying this out just from personal experiences. What confuses me the most about App Inventor is why so many people still use it. Earlier in the video, I explained how old it is, but for some reason, it literally gets so much traction, it's nuts. Enjoy some live footage of me demonstrating my own app. Welcome to the long-awaited playthrough of the game. We're here, we made it. Yeah, Smith Sirtle, here we go. Okay, instructions, I already kind of showed this in the video, so not really important. Um, so yeah, let's just play. So there actually is music. I don't know if you can really hear it that well. I'll try turning it up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so yeah, you just play like regular Wordle. I like starting off with source personally. I think it's a good word to use. So yeah, here you go, you click enter, it changes, it updates everything. Okay, cool, so there's an E. I like also going for night next. I feel like those two words are pretty much the go-to, usually eliminate a lot of stuff. Something I've noticed while playing specifically Smith Sirtle is that a lot of the times, like a lot of letters will get eliminated, only leaving like two, which is really surprising, so. And it ends up being like a really obvious word I never thought of. I also left a reveal word button up here, um, just in case you're desperate. But there's also actually a way to lose, which I'll show, I guess, after this. But So there actually are two letter E's in this word, which is actually kind of interesting. So maybe... Uh... Okay, okay. So, okay, let's see that. Okay, so... Oh, it's debate. Hey, we got it. And then I'll show you here. You can reveal this as empire. Just type it in. Boom. There you go. Score two. So I'm just going to skip to what happens when you um, fail. Okay, here we are. If I... Well, now that I type in, it's going to send me the loose screen. Here we go. Enter. And so it shows you what the correct word was, shows you your score compared to your high score, and then it lets you restart. So that's about it. I'm not going to play this much longer. You feel like everyone gets the gist now, but yeah. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this long rant about another brilliant project given to me by my teacher. And heads up, if I lose another mark for a dumbass reason, I'm not going down so easily this time. Update. I lost half a mark because my teacher thought I used the tutorial. I'm gonna keep it real with everyone. I don't know where he found a tutorial that looks like this, but um, either way I talked with him and I got the mark back, so it doesn't even really matter at this point. Consider subscribing and liking the video if you enjoyed it. It means a lot to me and helps me out tremendously. It's been Froggish, see you guys later.